So I think there were four key findings that we found. Uh, the first one is that we're in the early stages of data clean room. So if you haven't started yet, don't worry. There's plenty of time to get involved. Uh, that two thirds of people who have been using data clean rooms have been using them less than two years. And that's significantly uh, less adoption than other, other privacy enhancing techniques. So if you haven't used data clean rooms yet, there's time to get involved. The second key finding was that there are three core use cases for data clean rooms really um, kind of uh, audience insights, audience segmentation and activation, and then the third one is uh, measurement and attribution, which leads to the third finding, which is really that people are using them for the first two core uses, but they're really not adopting the third use case yet, which is really measurement and attribution, and so there's a lot of opportunity to get there. And the fourth key finding really is that data clean rooms um, take a lot of attention. They take a lot of time, cost, and money in people and resources. So you really need to be in it for the long run to do it. Because when you combine data clean rooms with their other privacy enhancing technologies, most uh, companies that are using data clean rooms are investing over $1 million in data clean rooms. So that's a really big investment. So you need to be very intentional about how you're going about it and how you want to use it because it's a really big investment in time and people. So what advice would you give brands that are looking to get into the privacy enhancing technology or data clean rooms right now? Right, I think um, you know they are really great to get involved with because you can um, really, you know, you correlate your first party data with a partner's first party data that really augments the insights that you can get from it. Um, and you can do um, a lot of great segmentation and targeting for it. So there's a really great um, you know, reason to get involved with the deprecation of cookies um, and the loss of other signals. This is a way to ensure that you still have that information in a privacy compliant way. What are, what are, where are we in the continuum of adoption? Is it too late if you're not involved in this yet? No, not at all. As I said, you know, two thirds of the people who are using data clean rooms today um, have been using them for less than two years. Um, and you know, the other thing that um, I think we need to think about as an industry as we, as we talk about adoption of data clean rooms is because of the high barrier to entry because of the cost, um, that really makes it a little prohibitive for some of the smaller players in the industry. And I think we need to think about that as an industry so um, you know, that all players can maximize the potential of audience segmentation, activation, and measurement. And we don't want to be kind of an industry of haves and have nots. And so we really need to think about how we um, equalize the playing field for people to get into data clean rooms. With the ongoing loss of identity signals like cookies, mobile IDs, et cetera, can clean rooms kind of help marketers fill that void and make up for that loss? They can because you're taking your first party data and matching it to a media company's first party data. And through that, you are able to get a bigger pool of, uh, of who your audience is and model that out to really be able to, uh, to use all of the power that cookies gave you in a new privacy compliant way. What is the future of data clean rooms and does the whole industry kind of need to get together to help them flourish? So, you know, the industry does need to get together um, because one of the key things that we need to make sure is that the, the data clean rooms have interoperability from one uh, publisher to another. So a a marketer can really understand how their total campaign works and be able to do measurement and media effectiveness from a totality of their campaign. Um, and so it's key that the data clean rooms are interoperable, including the walled gardens. I like to think of it as we need to move from walled gardens to picket fences, that there needs to be pipes that connect the two so marketers can evaluate the totality of their campaign.